Hey everyone. So today I thought I would do a sit down video because I haven't done one in a while. I realized that. Um, but today I want to talk about something that I actually recorded back in January, but it didn't turn out well. So I thought I would just refilm it because I really want to get this video out. Um, it's been on the back burner for a while. So today I want to talk about how I got into Urban Sketch and just a few of the tips that I think is going to be helpful to those of you who want to get into Urban Sketch. So anyway, before I get into all that, I kind of want to go on a brief history of my education. So a lot of you guys in the past have asked me if I attended an art school and no I did not. I have had thoughts about going to an art school but to me like financially I just didn't want to go into debt and having to pay off my like, student loans and all that so I just went to community college and honestly I really really enjoyed it so much. You know people say that high school was the best years of your life but for me college was. Um, it gave me so much time to really focus on me and what I really wanted to do as far as like a career or just what I was really interested in. So I attended San Diego City College in downtown. Um, it's seriously one of the best community colleges here in San Diego. I've been to two other ones and nothing compares to City College. Um, there Art courses are amazing, their professors are amazing. When I first got there, you know, got my GEs out of the way, and then I declared major in graphic design. But halfway through, I realized it wasn't for me, so I switched my major to two-dimensional fine art, which is what I graduated with. Taking those courses really helped shape my style to what it is today. I don't, th I mean, honestly, I don't use a lot of the, the techniques that I learned in school, but they did really help me figure out what I really liked and what I didn't like. So I took a lot of the different courses in composition and painting, I took life drawing, freehand drawing, I'll insert some of the old work that I have saved since then. But anyway, so once I graduated, that's when I started to get into watercolor because in college the materials that I mainly used like the mediums I used were mainly graphite, charcoal, pastels and the one painting medium that I used and was so in love with was acrylic paint so even after college I continued to use acrylic paint um, I really worked on canvas, so acrylic paint was like my number one medium, but after a while I got tired of it and then I learned more about different artists. Like, I think that's when Instagram became a thing. When did Instagram become a thing? But anyway, yeah, so I started following different artists and I learned about different um, mediums that I never used in college, like watercolor for instance. So yeah, after college, that's when I started to learn a little bit more about Urban Sketch. Um, honestly, I have been into that whole idea of just sketching real life. So yeah, that's when it started. And then I slowly learned about different Urban Sketchers. And then um, I think the year after, I found this book. I don't remember where or how I found it, but it's a book by Danny Gregory. He's like one of the main urban sketchers that I learned about in the beginning. Um, he has awesome work and he has two books that I purchased from him. Um, the first one, let me read this, I wrote it down. It's called An Illustrated Journey, Inspiration from the Private Art Journals of Traveling Artists, Illustrators, and Designers. So I actually made an old video about my four favorite urban sketchbooks. Yeah, so I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested in learning more about that. But seriously, that book really got me into urban sketch and I learned more about different artists like Will Freeborn, Liz Steele, and others who just has like this distinct style and in that book you learn about you know how they got into urban sketch what materials they bring along with them 
um, their style and it just really opened a whole new world for me and I was hooked. And then another illustrator that really pushed me to get into Urban Sketch um, is Wendy McNaughton. She's seriously one of my favorite illustrators and she's um, an SF native. She does a lot of editorials. I also mentioned her book in my four favorite urban sketchbooks. So ever since then I would just start buying new sketchbooks and just sketching whatever was around me. And that's what really started my YouTube channel. If you watch my first ever video, I mentioned Urban Sketch and how I really wanted to showcase that in my videos. I'm so thankful for Urban Sketch because it really did push me into creating more and to appreciate life as it is and documenting it in my own creative way. And to this day, I love it so much and I want to continue doing it for as long as I can. So now I'm going to get into the tips. The first tip is to learn the basics. That I can't stress enough. You have to learn the basics before you actually start drawing and painting because, you know, if you don't know anything about color theory or perspective or learning about proportions, then you can't really, I mean, yeah, you can you know, just draw and, you know, but it's best to know the basics, you know, learning which colors to mix. So obviously I went to college and I learned a lot about that stuff, but if for some reason you can't go to school and you are not really good financially, there are so many different resources online. Um, seriously, YouTube is the best for tutorials. I personally don't like to do tutorials, that's just not my thing, but I will suggest um, a really awesome YouTuber. His name is Alfonso Dunn. He does some really in-depth videos on how to draw certain things, like learning about proportion, like I mentioned, um, even perspective, and he does videos on Urban Sketch as well, and just, he really explains things so thoroughly and so well, more than I can ever do, you know? Like, I, I have the worst time explaining how I draw certain things, so I'll leave a link down below to his channel. There's other artists as well, but that's the one that I that really sticks to my mind when it comes to learning about these things. But also there's Google. Google is an awesome resource. Seriously, I, I, when there's something that I still want to learn, I just search on Google and it's just right there. Like There's so many different links to different websites and videos. Um, like till this day, I there's you know, there's a lot of things that I want to learn, so I still search on Google, and there it is, you know. Um, there's also awesome books. You can go to a library or go to a local bookstore and just purchase one. Seriously, there's a lot of different resources that you can gather. Now, the second tip I would say is that once you know the basics, is to just start off by drawing objects around your house. You can draw your cup of coffee, your breakfast, um, you can draw certain things in your room or different parts of your room and even just, you know, if you want to learn how to draw people, the best way is to start off by drawing your family. Now tip number three is to use what you currently have. Now this is so important because when I first started with Urban Sketch, I didn't have the most expensive art materials in the world, you know. Um, like I mentioned, after I graduated, I started using watercolor, but I didn't use the most expensive watercolor set. I think the one I first used was the Prang watercolors, and it was only the eight color palette. Um, so Prang is like, you know, <laughs> the watercolor set that you use in like elementary school. But I, you know, I just went with that because it was cheap, um, and since I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into watercolor full force, I just figured I would use that first to get myself used to painting with it. So yeah, I used that for a few years, honestly. Um, and then I went to like their 16 color palette, um, just trying to teach myself how to mix the colors and just to get used to working with the water. I didn't have, you know, micron pens or 
the best pens in the world. I honestly just used ballpoint pens that was just lying around the house. Um, so I would just use a ballpoint pen, uh, my trusty mechanical pencil, um, and then the sketchbooks that I used to use were Molsky notebooks. So I've been using Molsky notebooks for so many years and honestly I didn't like it so much because I just didn't like the ivory toned paper but I just went with it because everyone was using it. Sometimes I would just use like cheap sketchbooks um, and just work with that. So once I got used to doing that I gradually upgraded my art supplies and then after I used the Prang I went and bought the Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor set which you guys have seen me use so many times in my videos. Um, I obviously stopped using that because now I have um, the Schmincke watercolor set. So yeah definitely like if you're just starting out don't worry about buying the most expensive art supplies because you know if you're just getting used to it you should start off with the cheap stuff first you know and then gradually move up only if you're going to use it often tip number four don't erase and actually i would add to this don't erase and don't rip pages out can that just be all in f number four <laughs> okay so this is like one of the biggest things that i had to overcome i mean still till this day i still erase because you know i do sketch with pencil most of the time but yeah i used to have a problem with erasing the whole drawing or if i completely hate the page i would rip it out and you know dispose of it um but over time i realized like i shouldn't be wasting <laughs> A page um, I should just learn from it you know if there's a drawing that I don't like um, I don't erase I just move on to the next page um, because it's just interesting to look back on the sketchbook and looking at you know the mistakes that you made and just seeing how much you improved Tip number five is to date your pages now this one I I've been pretty good with. Um, sometimes I forget, but in my old finished sketchbooks, I've been really good with it. Um, especially when I do journaling, because of course, when you journal, you date your entries. Um, but yeah, this is a great way to see your progress over time. You know, like like I said, when you look through old sketchbooks, you can see, oh, I did this. Um, illustration back in May of 2015 and you can just see your progress from that day until the present day and just to see how your style changes. Now the last tip I would have to say is to practice. I know cliche but it's true. Practice, practice, practice. Now you don't have to practice every single day. I mean that would be great but just practice often. Um, you know and not just practice but to continue learning new things like i said you can watch tutorials on youtube on you know if you want to learn how to draw buildings you can learn about perspective and once you do that and once you practice it you'll significantly see an improvement in your work so that is about it um I'm sure there's a lot of different tips out there. Um, I know there's a lot that I'm missing out, but these are the ones that just really stuck to me. But if you want to add any other tips, leave them in the comments down below. I would love to read them. And yeah, so anyway, regarding Urban Sketch, um, I honestly haven't been going out to really sketch. But if you guys don't know, I do have a Patreon and one of my rewards is sketch and wander with Shar. So if you guys remember I had I started a series called Sketch and Wander um last year. It just stopped so abruptly. Um but I do want to continue that but I would love to continue that with you guys. So if you live in San Diego and you are interested in sketching with me, I will leave a link down to my Patreon. This reward is only limited to five people. I hope there are some of you who are interested 
and joining in on the fun. So that's about it. I hope you all are having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!